it's a great pleasure for me to, to be here today. I, I came here yesterday and heard some very interesting presentations from a wide variety of people from different companies trying to understand how the landscape is likely to change and trying to understand how they, how you can be part of a solution. Um, there is a, a saying in my language which some of you may be able to understand, and the saying is, an ezel stoot zich in het gemeen geen tweemaal aan dezelfde te steen. I'll translate that for you. It means a donkey, and donkeys are quite intelligent animals, it means a donkey never bumps into the same stone twice. When a donkey encounters the stone again, it is sensible enough to walk around the stone. And I've been trying to find, for 30 years, the right way of getting around the stone, but instead have been bumping into it again and again. Uh, I bumped into it from a government perspective. Uh, I bumped into it even harder from a UN perspective in the climate change negotiations. I bumped into it again from a private sector perspective. And now I'm actually beginning to find my way around it, I think, through the Global Green Growth Institute with our new leader, Dr. Yuroyono, um, where I see a massive enthusiasm among the member countries of that organization who are trying to find a different way to grow in a very practical sense. When I was flying here to, to Singapore the day before yesterday, I saw an, an article in the New York Times by Ton Friedman, who had been to Australia, one of his usual wonderful columns, in which he talked about a new concept that certainly I hadn't heard about before, and it's the concept of a black elephant. And what is a black elephant? A, a black elephant is a cross between a black swan and the elephant in the room. So the black swans are those massive disruptive events um, that we're also terribly afraid of, some of which were illustrated around climate just now. Those are the black swans. And then you have the, um, the elephants in the room, the issues that everybody knows are there, the massive issues that everybody knows are there, like climate change, but that nobody is talking about. And he combined those two into the notion of the black elephants. And that immediately raised in me the question, since I'm an eternal optimist, um, where are the white stallions going to come from? Where should we look for hope? Or to use the words that Rachel Fleischmann from BASF used yesterday, what is actually going to be the new normal? Or to use the words that, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name properly, to use the words of Signe Brun Jensen from Maersk yesterday, who asked the question, where do you go for your license to operate? And I think those questions are very valid because the, the epicenter of where action is happening or the epicenter of where we expect action to come from is shifting. And that, I think, is important for business leaders to know when you're trying to plot your course. In terms of the shifting epicenter, um, what I see is that governments and international organizations, even more strongly, the combination of governments and international organizations is beginning to fail it's beginning to get too complicated. We're not doing terribly well on the climate change negotiations. Hopefully that's going to change next year, but that has become a very, very complicated multilateral process where negotiators have been through 20 conferences of parties. The next one is going to be COP21, and I really hope they come of age at COP21 after 21 years of negotiation. We've also seen a lot of difficulties in the international trade negotiations, with the WTO breaking down several times, polarizing and being replaced by other trade negotiations. 
And we've recognized that actually we haven't regulated international oceans. We're trying to, through an international negotiating process launched at Rio Plus 20. But I wonder if that is going to succeed. So I see actually increasing difficulty in governments collectively, in international organizations, trying to come towards solutions. What I do see, and this is the eternal optimist again, that increasingly solutions are being found at a different level. I see cities finding solutions. I see regions finding solutions. I see corporates finding solutions. And I increasingly see cities, regions, and corporates beginning to find solutions together. And that's, I think, important, if that's correct, I think that's important in terms of how you decide to orient yourself. What I certainly see is that, that governments, to some extent, are beginning to reorient themselves to that new reality. Yes, they're still negotiating strongly in the international negotiations, but that they are all, what they are also recognizing is that there's something new emerging. I'm not sure if it looks like a Gordian knot or whether it's actually a triangle of triumph. But I think it could be the latter. I think it could be a triangle of triumph. So what are the three points of that triangle? Well, first of all, I see the business community, and many of you expressed this very eloquently yesterday. I see the business community proactively working on sustainability through growth, through cost reduction, and by building the value of your brand. I also see businesses being more and more proactive in terms of how they report on sustainability, on trying to value sustainability differently, in trying to express value in the terms that are more comprehensible to a shareholder. And that, to some extent, is being driven by policy. There was talk yesterday about the IRC. There was no talk, uh, no, the Global Reporting Initiative. There was, there was no talk yesterday about the IIRC, the International Integrated Reporting Coalition, which is a coalition between corporates, investors, uh, and regulators who are trying to come to a different system of reporting that looks not only at the valuation of financial capital, but other capitals as well. So there is change there. The second point of the triangle are the investors. The investors who the corporates claim at the moment are not asking for information on sustainability, are not appreciating information on sustainability. But I sense that there is beginning to be some change there as well, that the investors are beginning to define and understand risk more broadly. But the third point of the triangle is the policymakers. And the investors would argue that the policymakers are actually slowing them down from being innovative, that things like Basel III and Basel IV are preventing the investor from becoming more forward-looking and more long-term. And the corporates would argue that the policymakers are not encouraging them to report in a different way to stimulate a different kind of investment. And that, I think, that triangle with civil society sitting in the middle is where a great deal of change is going to happen. Singapore Stock Exchange is moving to a report or explain why you don't report on sustainability system. The same is true in Brazil, in South Africa, in the United Nations, uh, United States. So stock exchanges are changing. The Securities and Exchange Commission in the United States expects corporates to report on exposure to climate risk. They are looking at that in a broader context. So if you're looking for the direction in which to go, I would encourage you to think about that new triangle, hopefully that triangle of triumph, where corporates, investors, and policymakers can reinforce each other. Elaine Tan said yesterday that Singapore consumes four planets every year, and that Singapore families consume 2,500 plastic bags every year. 10 years ago, at Rio Plus 10, I remember to remember running into Tommy Coe, 
who is from Singapore as well, who in a private conversation described Africa as a continent run by kleptocrats. The question I ask myself today is who is stealing from whom? Yesterday, I heard many examples of very enthusiastic discovery processes that you are on. And my conclusion is that the only right conclusion can be to be brave, to be a winner, because thieves and liars are not in short supply. Thank you.